welcome to Creative Arts Apothecary. I am your host, Marina Zellner, and I am so happy and excited, inspired, honored to introduce my guest, Sean McNiff. Sean is one of the leading figures in this field. And whenever I go to to research more, this is one of my favorite subjects, art and healing. Whenever I go to research more, Sean's name just keeps coming up. He's written all the books. He hails from Wesley University and his uh, some of my favorite of his books include Art Heals, uh, How Creativity Heals the Soul, Art-Based Research, uh, Trust the Process, An Artist's Guide to Letting Go, The Death's Ecology of Art, and Art is Medicine. There's a few of it, um, and, and, and there are many more. Sean, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Wonderful to be here. It's it's great to speak with you. Um, <laughs> well, I want to ask you everything, and and just to keep it succinct, I decided to put some some uh, prompts that you inspire in me on these little cards here. This is the first one. Art is for oh, everyone. Marina, before we even switch yeah. it, my goodness, look at that art. Good job. Oh. <laughs> look at those images. Yeah, that's a. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to an artist about these issues. Yeah, great. <laughs> Wonderful. Look at those. Oh, my goodness. Look at those cards. I Thank you, Sean. I really appreciate that. And like one of the oh. things that kept me from the field of, of art healing was that when I went to an open house and I, uh, 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 you know, like an art therapy open house and um, I'm, I'm just like art and healing. It's a combination that's very intuitive in me and has been there my whole life. And, um, and when I was like, I'm here to be an art therapist, they're like, oh, but you said you're an artist. Yeah, you're going to struggle. This isn't for artists. Sorry. <laughs> and that really, that really, you know, maybe I was, I was pregnant. I was just, you know, I was like, okay, they're right. It's not for artists. Marina, you've just stated what I hope will be a main thrust of our conversation today. It's all about artists. I could tell you in my over 50 years of doing this work, I have learned the most about the psychology of art and how art heals from observing, listening to, studying, and conversing with artists who know something firsthand and empirically about these processes. And my main critique of my beloved field of art therapy today is it does not pay enough attention to how art heals, and it does not do enough to engage artists in the practice of art healing uh, and making it accessible to people everywhere. Because art heals inside and outside therapy. I'm so committed to art as a form of public health, and I want art therapy to lead that process in an inclusive way. In this day and age, when everyone when everyone talks about inclusivity, well, so professions are exclusive. So thank you for saying that. Oh, the feelings mutual. Thank you. Can, can, can you add to that? So we're saying art is for everyone. This is art. Art is for everyone, oh. and art is a force of nature. This is these are your words. Can you can you well, elaborate on that? I, I say that one of the things I, I I do, Marina, in terms of yes, art. Our healing is for people everywhere, and it has been throughout time. And um, however, what I've what I've dis discovered in the work I've done internationally is just as much as the way in which the art healing process transcends cultural differences. I mean, of course, the different ways of working and communicating and being in community in the various cultures of the world. Are, are infinitely uh, are infinitely different, but the art healing process, which I define as uh, as taking your affliction and doing something with it, you know, putting it to use, using it as fuel, and taking that affliction and transforming it through the creative process. That's what art does. It's an alchemical transmutation of matter and psyche and everything else in transforming it into something positive. That's what art healing has done throughout time, uh, uh, through the very, uh, in every sector of the world. And, and as Nietzsche said, art, whenever, 
when the threat to life is greatest, art emerges as a healing sor sorceress, expert at healing. Nietzsche does a great job on these processes. So if we all believe this, and I've, I've in my studies uh, do documented how, how it is a, as a universal process, why is it that we don't all do it? <laughs> And one of the main reasons today is that people feel that they can't create. They think that art is for the artist, that artistic expression. And when I talk about art, I'm talking about all forms of artistic expression, as Suzanne K. Langer said so wonderfully. When you talk about, you know, writing poetry, playing the violin, painting a picture, you're talking about art, capital A, capital R, capital T. And that artistic expression. Uh, in, involves all forms of of um, of um, sensory uh, activity, and uh, you know I've written recently about how my once again my dear field of art therapy and in what we call art itself has appropriated the visual arts have appropriated art. So this art process is um, is 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 whole and. People everywhere think they can't do it. So what I found to be the most effective way of getting people involved is to say, you know, artistic expression is as basic as breathing. Think about it as a fundamental force of nature, like breath, like moving. And I say, if you can move, you can paint, you can, you can, you can dance uh, all all forms of artistic expression come from that fundamental uh, movement, which I see as a force of nature. And my goal is to is to is to try to to, to help people relax and, and realize that they can make significant art in all forms of expression if, if they just start to move. I love that tip of yours, where where you say th think of think of making marks on the page i'm paraphrasing but like dancing across the page and i was like oh it's so good I, so, so i've done this i've done this to, to just document and prove empirically that they can do it and they can make significant art beautiful i talk about mark mark making and trust the processes just begin to make marks and continue keep doing it it's like john cage with music he said after a while you know making these sounds after a while, what maybe once was boring and you, or you didn't think ha had a purpose becomes fascinating. And I, and, I, and, and I keep discovering if people can stay with the sounds, stay with the gestures, stay with the mark making and repeat it, that something significant will emerge always. Something oh. authentic and significant, you know, through your way, as you just showed with those incredible, by the way, uh, those images of yours you just took my breath away you, through your unique way of doing it your way not my way i, I appreciate that so much I, the art, art heals the soul um what's the connection what's what's the connection these are your words too well i i think the first line of um of my book art is medicine that's that's had a that, that book has had a great life it, it, it was um uh, published in 1992, and it's been translated into many languages. And it, um, the first line of the book is that whenever illness is associated with a loss of soul, art emerges spontaneously as a remedy. Uh, and, and in my studies of indigenous healing traditions throughout history, I was a young person in college, I, the great opportunity to be with Thomas Berry, you know, the great work and other teachers in New York City that were doing uh, so much work with in in indigenous religion and healing practices. And one of the things I found in, in my transcultural studies of art healing is that in, in indigenous communities in all sectors of the world, uh, illness is, is universally defined as a loss of soul. And the healer's job, working with the whole community, with the support and energy of the whole community, the, the healer's job is to help in restoring that soul to the person's body and psyche and community life. So this, I think people could really understand this today. 
and all of our different lingo of depression and 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 everything else, uh, 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 trauma and everything else, uh, uh, they they can people can directly relate to this notion of dis discomfort and dis ease as a, as a loss of soul soulful connection to the present moment of life. You know, as Nietzsche says, art is the expert healer. Beautiful. Can you say a little bit, please, about the difference between curing and, and healing? Yeah, great, great. Yeah. And, and I, when I say art is the healer, uh, before we get to that, it's not, not it's, it's of course the therapeutic relationship in art therapy, but art heals everywhere, inside and outside therapy. And once again, the world today is so broken up into all of these uh, uh, professional specializations and guilt is that we've, we've lost connection to how art itself, artistic expression and artistic processes itself is the healing process. In my job, say, as an art therapist leading a community of people, as we're going to see a little later, or an art therapist working with an individual person, is to cultivate that process, to cultivate the art healing. I'm not as interested in the, the psychological cliches and in the, 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 the proliferation of the ideologies, psychological ideologies. I'm interested in the, in the depth psychology of the artistic process as, as a painter was recently writing. It's about the paint, it's not about me. <laughs> it's about, about the paint, the gesture, the color, uh, the enactment. It's about the creative energy of the art. That is where the healing happens. And I, yes, I'm a little passionate about this. I do get a little jacked up about it because art therapy does not pay enough attention to this. And I know this as a person so active in the field is hardly any attention given, uh, given to it. Uh, curing and healing, uh, very briefly, when I was working with the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute in Boston, uh, helping them, the very distinguished uh, CEO of Dana-Farber, a medical doctor, Dr. Nathan, uh, who, who was involved in, in the art program at Dana-Farber said, you know, Sean, this program uh, led by a, by a woman, M.L. O'Connor, who, who is an artist, a poet, and um, herself a patient at Dana-Farber, who ultimately did pass uh, 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 with uh, the cancer experience. Um, one of the things that ML in the program has taught us doctors, these are the distinguished world famous Harvard Medical School Dana-Farber doc doctors, is that, is that he said, art heals. This program has taught us that art heals. That, that's where I got the title from that book and I credit to him. And he said, we doctors, we, we uh, we try to cure, but we can't always do it. We can't always cure cancer, you know, cure it away. Uh, but we can bring art healing into that process. Healing does have a sacred dimension to it. It's an alchemical dimension. It is not fixing. It is a it is a deep process. I mean, there was an, there was an arts therapist person said, "Oh, we don't want to talk about healing in this work because that's religious." Well, okay, I'll take that. I'll accept that it has a, has a deep spiritual dimension. But the word therapy itself, the Greek root of it is healing. <laughs> These folks don't study. They don't study history. They don't study the, the roots. Uh, I mean, when I've been accused of cultural appropriation by some of these folks and their, their new... Uh, they're new, well, we won't get into that political business today, but I've been accused, uh, not canceled yet, but accused of appropriation, cultural appropriation, for studying beyond my own place here in Massachusetts. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not taking anything that someone does in another region of the world and necessarily ever using it as my own. I'm just learning about what I, how, what I do in my crazy unique ways connects to things and patterns and forces beyond myself. Totally. Yes. Mm -hmm. And art heals everywhere. It has throughout time. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily cure. <laughs> like breath. It's like a Thich Nhat mm -hmm. Hanh would say about breathe in, breathe out, present moment, present moment. I mean, 
the breath leaves and the, or the problem leaves and a new problem comes right right we, what i've learned is that as soon as the, the the problem is transformed a new one appears or the same one appears in an, in a different moment it's just a matter of uh, it's an ongoing breath it's an ongoing healing process beautiful absolutely it's, it's, it's and as the artist would say it's an ongoing practice that's why we can learn so much from artists Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that, this one drives me a little nuts, the way art therapy has uh, has not seriously engaged artists. The the whole emerging area of art and healthcare, uh, uh, has, uh, which has developed in some ways as a separate discipline, which I disagree with. That's a whole other conversation, because to me, it's all integral. Uh, as Stanley Cobb said years ago at uh, Harvard, there's no such thing as a as a, as a mind-body split. It's, it's all integral. And the same thing goes with all forms of healing and therapy. It's all integral. Yeah, I mean, it's how take a breath, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I really appreciate that because it really, at the end of the day, for me, it's about creating that space for hope, keeping hope alive, creating the space and possibility for hope. And creativity is such an ambassador of hope because you just, you like in the process, move towards the state of healing. It's just part of the process. Yeah, and and what what I was trying to conclude with, thank you, uh, is that you know that's why when I talk about take a breath, I need to practice it myself. Is that the the arts and health uh, community is embracing working together with artists, musicians, and poets, and theater people, and painters, and storytellers coming into the community and working together with the medically trained person, the therapeutically trained person. We work together in community. Those of us that have spent our lives dealing with it how can help and lead and supervise artists. We want that in volunteers. You know, oftentimes a 17-year-old high school student, it could be more effective, uh, say, in an, in a, in, in a, um, in, a, in an elder care facility that, and, that I can. We have to work with artists and learn from artists because artists are the ones, you, you got it, you know, <laughs> learning from students. My students have been my major teachers through my, my because every, I, I, when I wrote about art-based research, the work itself is an ongoing natural experiment. Often one of the best things come through unplanned. Natural experiment means those things that happen in nature and then we study them. Well, that's what's happened in all of my teaching and my work with students. They've been artists and students. I, I've been my primary teachers. And, and of course, when I talk about artists, I'm talking about the people who I engage in the art healing experience. But it's, it's emerged spontaneously in different parts of the world. Mm. Uh, Carl Jung, uh, uh, Carl Jung, over a hundred years ago, uh, uh, did through his work of active imagination. He didn't call it art, art therapy, or art, but he did just about everything uh, that we do today, and he did it magnificently. So it just keeps it. It's like it's like art itself and art healing. It just emerges, and then it in our, in our era, it emerged in response to the needs of therapeutic uh, settings. Mm. You know the therapy. Yeah. Transform yeah. conflict. Yeah, and in, in my home, we have a poster that says "Make art, not war." Can you speak to this? Well, well, I mean, I talked about personal conflict, and that is the basis of healing. Is a matter of taking, taking the problem, and trans positively transforming it, uh, it, it into uh, 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 what I call an affirmation of life. And, and this is done through the infusion of creative energy through, in the case of art. Art, art just infuses us with uh, creative energy. And um, in my experience, I always, always, always work in communities of people. I've never really worked with people. And why do I do that? Because the community becomes a slipstream, a slipstream of energy. It generates more energy than, a, than uh, and, and of course, leadership is important because that that creative energy uh, can be harmful, uh, or that group energy can be harmful. As we all know, it has a shadow side, a dark side. So leadership is very important in terms of safety, support, and 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 and, and, and getting the community to truly act as a healer, as opposed to an afflictor. Now, 
In terms of transforming conflict, I think you know that one of my 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 current interests as of this day, uh, and I just uh, worked uh, gave the keynote to the Russian Art Therapy Association to colleagues in Russia, and um, and 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 when we are in positions as I, I'm sure my uh, colleagues there uh, are uh, of where they cannot uh, influence. Uh, these these major forces in a society directly or change them, um, they can do something about it through their own artistic expression. It, it you know is it as I keep saying small acts, <laughs> small actions in some way contribute to the transformation of the whole. That that book. Art as Medicine came out of my feeling of frustration and helplessness uh, during the Iraq War. And, um, and I made art. And, um, and that art, uh, and that book's had an impact on the world. And I'm hoping my Russian colleagues, after the keynote I did to them, will be making art, will be showing that art. And I hope that that art, over time, will, will have a transformative, uh, I'm a Pollyanna a transformative positive influence, not only on their communities and their country, but on the world. Because I, I really think that what we do in relation to art healing uh, 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 ranges from the microsphere of personal experience to the macrosphere of world experience. Significant artworks transform the world as well as personal life. I'm a great believer in that. Me too. Yes, may it be so. Absolutely. So we can always do something. So good. Sean, thank you for all the inspiration, really, for, for connecting, for all of it, for doing the work that you do. Can you say um, something about, is that is that painting, that gorgeous painting, is that, is that yours? Um, yeah, that's, well, I'm making art all the time. That's that's one, yeah, here in the, yeah, in the Zoom yeah. I'm in, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I, I love your painter. style. You are a painter, and I can recognize your hand. You have a signature style, and you're, you're, you're very um, humble about that is you don't showcase your I, you don't showcase your art but for you it's a it's a big part of your life and I really appreciate that because it, you welcome other people who you just you you know you're not like this is you, you don't set a standard it needs to look like this or it needs to look like this instead you're like let it look like let, you do you you do you and your art will come through and it heals and it's wonderful so I just want to acknowledge your your, your gorgeous painting style and and the work that you do Thank you.